friends, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I'm back with another One Page Wonder. So last week, I guess it was, I did this one using uh, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, trimmed down and cut, and it's a horizontal orientation of a little journal, right? Multi-pages, super easy though um, to put together. And I have come back and done one and I have the measurements for you guys using a 12 by 12 piece of paper. So we're gonna go over that and I'm gonna decorate one. I did use scrap of paper that is double sided and then I used some really pretty papers by Pink Monarch Prints. This is the Harvest Bloom um, journaling cards, I think. I, I will link the kit for you. And then I used a few little bits and pieces from their October kit, um, Tattered Wings, but um, some of the pages of the Harvest Bloom. But I'll, I'll link the Harvest Bloom stuff and their, their shop for you in the description. So if you want to make one similar, you can. The scrap of paper is just from my stash and um, is some that I had on hand. I'm gonna use a different pattern for the one we're gonna make together. And hopefully it's gonna go okay with, with, the, um, with the, the digitals. We'll see. It's kind of this um, pinky peach color. It's kind of hard to see. So cutting this is super easy actually. Um, and we'll go over that. So the first thing you do is take your 12 by 12 piece of paper and cut it, cut one inch off. So cut it at 11 inches or one inch, whatever. Leaving yourself the, this strip saved for something else, you don't need it, um, with a piece of paper that is 12 by 11. On the 12 inch side, cut three strips that measure four inches each. So you can cut it at eight and then cut it at four. So three strips that are 12 by four. No, 12 by, four by 11. Gosh, ignore me and refer to the measurements I'm going to put in the description for you so that there'll be no confusion. The strips are 11 by four inches. If you don't have 12 by 12 scrap of paper, you can take a eight, a several pieces of eight and a half by 11, you'd need two, and make four by 11 inch strips, and you could make one with us, okay? Now, each piece, let's do it on this side, you're gonna score, and the score for the first one um, is at three inches on the 12 inch side, so score this one at three inches. Score the next piece at four inches. And your final piece, you're gonna score at five inches. Every once in a while, my printer behind me, I haven't printed anything for the last several hours, and it just starts making noise. It's on and it's connected, and the rollers just kind of make some noise. I have no idea. It is the strangest thing. All right, we are going to fold on our score lines, and this is where you just want to, again, line everything up, make sure it's nice and neat, and score each of your papers. Once we have them folded, we'll decide which patterns we want in which direction. I'm just getting it scored to begin with, or folded to begin with. So, this is the flap that's going to be the cover, if we leave it that way. I do like to alternate the patterns because I think it's cute. So I do like that. So we have flower, and then this is floral too, but a little bit of the, the pattern, flower pattern, just like that. Now, just because I like to show you all your options, you could also flip each of these around, and we could do it this way like this, okay? And I am going to be layering some of the pretty um, papers and things from the Harvest Bloom collection. 
and hope that they go, the oranges go okay with it. It's sort of like a salmon-y pink. I don't know how well you can see, you know, on, on your screen, but I'm hoping it's going to coordinate okay. I really liked this green with it. So you, you can decide how you want to lay out your papers. I think I will leave mine like this and not overthink it. Now, just like in the first one, I do like um, giving the paper edges a little bit of an edge, and I pulled out a different one of my, my punches this time, and it gives that kind of little scallopy punch outlook. On this one, I only punched two of the pages. And I think on this one, I'll do the same. I'll punch the second and fourth pages. So get out the piece that you wanna punch. If you don't have one of these, you can skip this. Um, Jennifer, hi Jennifer, if you're listening, um, made, made one of these um, and she used a die to do her edge. So, you know, if you do have some dies, die cut machine, um, that's an option too, to make a fun edge. So, you can also just leave it. You could round the corners, whatever your heart desires. All right, and now it's this edge. I always put it back together to make sure I'm punching the right ones before I start. And you can do all the pages if you wanted to. Oops, <laughs> I didn't line that up very well. We'll have to put it back in. And there's always the chance when you, you punch multiple times that you won't line it up and it'll get all ugly on you. But hopefully I did okay, yeah. Turned out fine. All right. And this punch, again, is a gazillion years old. It's a Stampin' Up! one. And um, I've had it for a very long time and I just dug through my, my punches and found it. Okay. Pretty. Now, if you want to ink, you can ink your edges. I'll do a little bit of inking here in a minute. But another thing that i pretty sure I showed you guys, we did on this one a three pamphlet stitch. I also talked to you about how you could run this through a sewing machine or staple it, which made me remember this little doodad <laughs> that came in that box of supplies that I bought of craft supplies off of Facebook Marketplace and then went through and showed you guys what I what I ended up with. Well, I'm going to ink this so we can see where the middle is. I learned, I watched a video and I learned how to use it. So I'm going to use it to put this together. So let me just clip it to help keep it from sliding too much. I think one clip's enough. Okay, so what I learned is there's the three sizes, small, medium, and large. And you have to make sure whichever stapler you're going to use, you, you turn this setting. So there's a button under here, and you can turn it. I'm using the medium one, which I believe is a standard staple size. So, um, and then... It, the staple board has these lines that help you line it up. And I know I want to staple right here in the center. This is how I did it. Right here on the center. And um, I put the, the inside of the staples on the inside so you can see that. And um, so I lined it up this way. If you want the staples the other direction you have this line again I don't know why I'm spending so much time showing you guys this because unless you have one of these it's not really that big of a deal but I tried to make it work <laughs> in the in the quick video and I, I I didn't do so well all right I'm gonna do three staples and I'm going I inked the wrong side I want that finished part of my staple on the outside I want the first staple to be somewhat close to the edge. This is all magnetic, so this holds the paper in. And the whole point is then you can staple wherever you want. And they, these little guys just slide up in there, and then we're gonna staple, and look at that. It stapled right where I wanted it to. Didn't close the staple the best. That didn't happen last time, but 
there we go. I'll close it myself. All right. So now I'm going to pick up the magnet. And again, I'm using this line to help me line it up. And I'm going to do another one close to this side. Staple. So if you have like a big mouth stapler that will fit or one of these or some kind of staple, stapling this because it's only three layers works. And now I'm just going to kind of center it. Um, works. Now, if you don't have a stapler, whoops, that one I didn't line up very well. I think it'll still be okay. If not, I'll take it out. Eh, it's going to bother me. Let's take it out and redo it. Um, but you can do, go back to the other video if you need help um, to do the three pamphlet stitch. You could sew it on your sewing machine, you know, whatever options you want to do to stick yours together. Okay, I'm going to try this one more time, be a little more careful. I got a little confident there. Oh, and these arrows right here really help you see as well if you're lined up. Mine look pretty good. Ah, much better. Okay, and then the other cute thing is these little staplers. Um, oops, are magnetic, so everything does hold together. Well, <laughs> holds together fairly well. How's that? Yeah. Okay, you can turn it upside down. That big one wants to fly out. All right, <laughs> bonus. If you've ever wondered how one of those work, now you know. Or if you were curious after watching my video and I was like, what does this thing do? Okay, and now we are ready to just decorate and have fun. And just like the smaller size, we can add pockets. We can add journaling paper these cute journaling cards, which you'll have space to write on the back, whatever your hearts desire. So I do have um, some of these journaling cards and I had to kind of trim them and tear them to fit the sizes that I need. So even though I've cut them out, I didn't worry about rounding the edges yet. And then I have just some pattern papers and then a printed neutral so that I can add some journaling spots and then some little doodads. So now I'm just gonna decorate. So I do wanna figure out the front of my journal because uh, I wanna make sure I keep a card, a journaling card that has the correct orientation and that I think would look pretty for the front. I put a pumpkin on the other one, so those are all horizontal. So these are my choices of what I have printed out. The bird is pretty. I think I'm gonna go for the butterfly, which tends to kind of be my go-to. And I could tear, but I'm gonna just cut a little bit. Um, there's several lines on here uh, to just, I guess, add interest and detail, but I just went to, one of the lines closest to where the pattern starts. Let's see, yep. And again, I haven't done much inking yet. I'm gonna use my walnut stain. There's the lid, not that you can read it. Trust me, it's walnut. And we will hopefully be able to make the cover look cute. I do think the journal itself, the colors and things will blend a little bit better because, you know, add some distress ink and everything looks a little better, don't you think? <laughs> okay. So I was really surprised at how much um, you guys enjoyed my, what am I going to be selling, making and then selling at my craft fair video. It seemed to have a great response. So thank you guys, those of you that watched and commented and let me know what you think. I am still going to put together the hot cocoa pouches that I mentioned, and I am going to do some mini journals and some more Christmas cards. So I may 
before the craft fair do one more video so you guys can, can see the other ideas that I came up with and then maybe let you guys know how I did. If that's of interest, let me know if that's something you would like, like to see me do. And I also had several people ask about a few of the items. I've already sold the pink Santa Christmas folio. And I believe somebody asked if I could do a tutorial on that folio. And it's very similar. I'm just going to get that out of the way. It's very similar to the tutorial that I did with the Stamperia paper. But that one has a bunch of pages. And this one, it was more, I considered it more like a folder for tags um, or to then insert into a larger journal. And then it was super stuffed with all those beautiful tags that coordinated with the paper. The, and then the other difference is it did have that angled flappy pocket. So all of that being said, I will probably be putting together a video on how I did that soon. Um, I do not have that same paper, so it'll be a little different. But if you asked about that, I haven't forgotten you. And I'm working on it. I've had I have lots of requests that are on the list, and I am going to try to get to all of them as soon as I can. What did I do here? Oh, I put a little tab. That would look cute. Let's do that again. One of these, and we only need one of them because I'm not going to have the back show. So that will work great. The other thing, while I'm decorating and yapping, that I am almost ready to debut, it may even be my next video, but if not very soon, is my first Christmas digital junk journal paper kit. So I'm excited about that. I plan to, it's got a variety of Christmas trees, a variety of Santa Clauses. I'm going to use my Wineco PVA wet white glue. And let's see, Christmas trees, Santa Clauses, snowmen. It has some full size horizontal orientation paper that you can use for lots of things, including if you want to just fold it in half and use it as a journaling page. Some tags, some holiday words some other little shapes of ephemera. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it, but I am excited about it, and I've got a cute little project that I am planning to make with that paper and then show you guys and then maybe do some other projects as well, larger journal or something. But... Uh, let me know if you're as excited as I am about having some new Christmas papers to start thinking about. All right, on this page, I don't have to do it exactly the way I did the original, but I'm just kind of reminding myself what I did. I am going to do a... I probably should tear my larger journaling spots first so I make sure that I have the paper that I need. So I am going to cover some of these papers that are a little more floral. It would be hard to write on a page like this so that we have a nice space for journaling. So on this spread, it's at the back, I'm just eyeballing the tear it's not exactly straight but it is okay I'm gonna hand tear to give it some interest we are going to do journaling and we might do journaling on this side journaling in a pocket I think I'll put the journaling on this side just to be different and I do kind of like that edge peeking peeking over so I'm gonna do that and we'll put something here like to top to I don't know, as a border on the side. We'll see how it comes together. But we'll have some journaling spots. And I was in the middle of talking about something and it has completely jumped out of my head. <laughs> this is what happens when you talk to yourself a lot. And I like to talk 
and I do talk to friends and family. I talk to the folks at where my shop is, the staff that work there. I'm, I'm a vendor, they're not my staff, but they're employed by the company where my shop is located but they're very nice ladies that work there. So I do have plenty of people to talk to, but when you are when you make videos like I do, just about every day, oh, I wanna to come to this side, I guess I spend a lot of time talking to you guys, but that's sort of like talking to myself because there's no one to respond. And it's easy to lose your train of thought. And that is what I just did. So maybe it'll pop back in my head. If, if, if I was in the middle of something and you are super interested, Leave me a comment so that I know and I will do my best to answer it for you back in a comment or in another video. So we'll, we'll leave that there and chalk it up to I have a lot on my mind. Here we go. There's a cute tag and it kind of takes up a little bit of that space there. Now on this side, I definitely want to do a pocket, but I'm going to wait and let's do, we'll do a pocket on this side, a different kind of pocket on this side, and we'll do another journaling spot here. I'll tear it this way this time. Again, just to use this to help me measure. You could use some lined paper, some coffee dyed paper. Again, like me, you could go for just a neutral paper to layer on there. The layering does a few things, of course. It allows us to, need a little more off of it. It allows us to have lovely space to write on. And I don't mind, personally, if there's not lines. I know a lot of people like lines, so like a, a fun ledger paper would look cute on here. You could even put some vintage style postcards that still have room for writing. That would be fun to put on, the, on here. But it also makes the pages just a little bit thicker. I get asked a lot of time, I get asked often what kind of cardstock or paper am I printing on. And this is what, the description of the paper that I use. They, they call it a medium weight cardstock, and I would agree with that. It's not super, super heavy duty, but it's certainly not a piece of copy paper. See, I mean, it holds its shape. It's, uh, it says it's 90 pounds, but it's much thinner than I would say 100, and, or it feels much thinner than 110 pound copy weight. So I guess the 20, to, wait, yeah, 20, 20 pound difference is, is quite a bit. I'm just gonna stick this on here because I like it. Okay, and again, we're gonna have a different kind of pocket. I'm just doing this so I make sure I have the journaling sp spots that I want because I really want this one to have nice journaling. So we did one here, we kind of went back and forth. Perhaps another one here. And we'll see if we have enough to do, or maybe we'll do two smaller ones and perhaps there will be enough. We need another strip. Ooh, if I go this way, I bet there'll definitely be enough. That's exciting. Okay, and we'll ink it. Uh, so I mentioned the ink that I'm using and the glue that I'm using. I do have my Amazon storefront linked for you guys in the description. Again, along with, I'll have the measurements for the folio journal itself. But if you uh, do choose to visit my Amazon storefront, thank you. <laughs> and if you end up making a purchase, it's no cost to you, but I will get a few pennies from Amazon. So it certainly is a way, if you're going to shop anyway, if there's things you're going to purchase, um, to, to help me or if you follow other creators that are Amazon affiliates, um, to help us out just a little bit. And same with my Etsy links. They're affiliate links, and Etsy gives me a few pennies. So just to let you know what that is all about, it's a way to help those of us that are trying to craft <laughs> or create, have a creative business, whether you know people are doing it 
full time or as a side side thing for fun or to just earn a little extra money. All those things kind of add up and help us. So thank you. I don't want to ever not say thank you enough because I really do appreciate you guys. I will also say um, <laughs> someone left a not so pleasant comment. One of my videos and a lot of times I just delete them guys. I just I don't have room for the negativity. I don't feel like going back and forth with folks. It's just not important and not how I want to spend my time. However, um, this person wasn't that awful of a comment, but but they were, were rude, I guess, or a little negative about how I talk and my language. I'm saying I say um too much and that they just can't even deal with that. So I'm not sharing this with you guys to be negative, but I, I gave it some thought and I decided, you know, to practice kindness, maybe a little bit of snarkiness, but I just commented back, I hope you have a lovely day. Because I figured, you know, if you have nothing better to do than to be negative, perhaps there's something going on in that person's life. And then another viewer, who I won't mention, who's very positive and sweet and kind, but I guess <laughs> told the person they were being rude, and they should leave me alone, and left a comment. Anyway, the person took the, the original comment down, so it's as if I had deleted it, whatever, it's gone. And I'm bringing it up just to say, I do appreciate you guys and I appreciate, you know, you coming to my defense, but I really am trying not to let the negativity enter this space because I love what I get to do. And you guys are so kind and generous with, you know, leaving me comments and telling me what you think. And I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, and I know that I get flustered sometimes. And again, when you're, oh no, I tore my pumpkin. When you're basically talking to yourself for 30 minutes or an hour or however long it takes me to do a video, sometimes it's hard to fill in the silence. It's challenging. It's a lot. And I'm not a professional. I'm not, when I say professional, I'm, I'm not someone that has made videos and spent their life doing this. But I'm certainly enjoying that I get to do this at this stage in my life. So anyway, a lot of times, if you ever do like see a comment and then it disappears, perhaps the person had second thoughts and decided they didn't want to put that out. But a lot of times, like I said, I, I just decided to just delete them and move on with my life. And I figure that's the best response. So, and I'm not bringing this up to start to have a whole big discussion about it. It was more just to say thank you. And I will move on. We need a little doodad here, don't you think? A doodad will make, make it even better, even, even better. So honestly, this is the 12 by 12 version. It's having fun decorating on larger pages with whatever papers you like or have on hand. I think this one would be fun if you, a lot of you have watched my videos and purchased my fall gratitude kit and that would be one if you're not ready to commit, or maybe you have someone you want to gift a, a little journal to, but you're not sure if they're really into like a large <laughs> commitment of gratitude journaling. Making one this size using a variety of those papers, and you could then put the prompts, the little prompt cards on some of the pages and just do a small one. I think that would be a really cool idea. So... Just, just other ideas for you to consider as you think about what papers you want to use. I think this one would be super cute using scraps. So just pick a scrap of paper that you like and then start collaging and layering it on with what you have in your stash. And I think it would come together great. So that's another idea. Let's add a couple of pockets and then I'm gonna call it a day and finish this one off camera. I want to do some pockets that just top load this way that are horizontal, but I also am interested in doing at least one angled pocket. 
So let's do the large one that I want to do like a strip. So we'll do one here and I'm just going to ruler tear using the paper to help guide how large I need the pocket. I would say rectangle pockets that you don't worry about adding flaps to make them roomy, like a gusset or something. This is the simplest of the pockets. <laughs> I like them, they make me happy. They're, one like this will be very roomy. Several of the sweet coordinating Harvest Bloom cards will stack in here. The pocket itself is large enough. Yeah, if we wanna decorate it a little bit. With this journal, with the pages that stagger like this, it's always, I think, important to keep coming back and seeing whatever you're putting on there, how it's gonna look from the front. Because if you decide to put something close to this edge and then you don't like how it looks, it's a little disappointing. But I don't mind seeing this little strip of paper. So I'm gonna decorate the pocket just a touch with a scrap that I had. Cute, this, this page definitely needs something, but I'm just not there yet. Pocket, let's do, let's do a corner pocket, perhaps to this corner, so that we can then tuck things in. These oranges are kind of fun. I'm gonna just angle it like this. You could, I could have gone ahead and torn it into a rectangle or into a square and then gotten my triangle, but I also, I can just tear a triangle off the end of the paper. I do like the little Florida de -lis. Is that how you say it? That goes, it kind of goes with that peachy flower. This pocket and these pages are large enough too. You could almost probably, if you, depending on how you fold it up, you could put like a full piece of writing paper in here, which would be fun. Let's put one of these little butterflies right on that pocket. I am also really enjoying my ephemera holder notebook thingies that we made together in a video recently. I'm, I think using my doodads, <laughs> my extras, those pieces so much more since I've taken the time to organize them. So that's been a bonus in my life. Okay, things to put in the pockets. And now let's do, let's do another little corner pocket right here may not be let me see what happens if I tear this off if it'll be the right the correct angle or if I need to do another one let's see ah that's gonna work great they're upside down but I don't mind and I may I may decorate on top of it to see here we go and again on a triangle pocket you just add glue to the two sides <clears throat> putting it on the wrong page. Pay attention to which page you're putting it on. Wipe the glue off. I know some people keep, I think, baby wipes or something to just really quickly, depending on, I guess they couldn't be too wet because you don't want to wet it, but I tend to just use my fingers, and that's probably why my fingers always look, it, it comes right off when I wash them well after my day of crafting, but it's probably why my hands always look a little dirty, a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Think of that it needs something something how about that in a number the number three three is a good number our youngest daughter who is in her last year of undergrad in college is actually coming home today I'm so excited Julie will be home for her fall break and we'll be getting in let's see probably within the next two hours so soon I get to start worry about worrying about her driving but it's okay not her driving, but worrying that she is driving. I think that's the better way to say that. And 
we're going to, I'm not sure what all we have going on, but I do know we are going to go to um, the mountains in the Shenandoah Valley here in Virginia. One of the days she's home and go apple picking, get some fresh apples. And I think there's going to be vendors and some different things. So we're excited about that kind of a fall family activity and it was her idea which is even better right <laughs> love it when they want to spend time with you I am looking for my corner rounder because so I cut these out but didn't finish trimming them because I didn't know which ones I was going to cut smaller and tear and which ones I was going to use to just put in some pockets I really wanted the truck I, I want to see the truck I think I'm going to use the truck itself perhaps as a pocket what does that sound like how does that sound I think that'll be fun so holding it by the side I want to keep open I'm going to make it a top load pocket glue on three sides I'm going to bring it sort of to this edge so we see it and it covers up a little bit of that floral depending on what we put in this pocket that floral might get covered up and then we'll decorate it up just a little and i think i'm going to then call this one enough for the video here in just a moment just trying to find some pieces and i've got more doodads in this book i was trying to stay within these few kits not that it matters, but <laughs> um, I know they kind of coordinate well together, so that was part of it. Let's see. Let's see if we like that. Kind of bringing a little more of the orange in there. Yeah. I'll do that. I think I'll just leave that pretty peach flower. There we go. Ta-da! All right, so really all I have left, I need to do something here, maybe some more journaling paper. <coughs> Excuse me, a tag to go in there, a card, something to put in here, like one of these. Something to put in that pocket, in this pocket. So a little bit left to do, but I'm happy with it. I really like this size, I'm glad that there was interest and we've decided to go ahead and show you this size. I'll have to put all of these up where they belong. Just getting them out of the way so you guys can see what we've made. I really like it. And then again, to compare, this was the size that we made in the other video. So it's a little bit shorter, not quite as tall. All right. I hope you like it. If so, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Thanks, everybody.